Hello again, John Wilde, here to give you another look at vintage action figures. And this time we're going to be looking at Star Trek The Next Generation by Galoob from 1988. In 1987, Paramount Television, considering the success of Star Trek The Motion Picture Series, began production on a new Star Trek TV series, Star Trek The Next Generation. The development crew included many of the same persons who were involved in the creation of the original series. But unlike the original series, a network backer wasn't willing to give the new show the creative freedom the producers wanted. So a first run syndication release was tried. Stations that aired reruns of the original series, mostly independent TV stations, would be offered the new Star Trek show. Star Trek The Next Generation began its run on September 28, 1987. The first season was met with mixed reaction, but had enough support for a second season and the rest is history. Star Trek The Next Generation is a beloved TV show that helped spawn the Star Trek TV family that appeared in the early 1990s. Star Trek The Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, and Star Trek Voyager. Also in 1987, members of the Gloob development team visited the set of Star Trek The Next Generation during the filming of the Encounter at Fairpoint episode. Most of the bridge crew were included in the first series, Picard, Riker, Data, Geordi, Tasha Yar, and Worf. Each character had a molded phaser in their hands. One hand is always in a closed fist, so losing accessories isn't a problem but the toy is always holding a weapon or in a purse holding position. Each of these figures came with the exact same tricorder accessory with a loop strap. It kind of looks like a cell phone hanging at the end of them. Well, a 90s version of a cell phone. These figures have seven points of articulation. They articulate at the head left and right. Their arms will move up and down. They bend at the hip and they also bend at the knees. Strangely, I've noticed, some of these figures come with foot pegs and some of them don't. The Mego 8-inch figures had removable but easily lost accessories. The 3 and 3 quarter line for the motion picture came with no accessory or molded weapons. Finally, the Erta line had oversized phasers and a huge tricorder. So Galoob figures have accessories that aren't easy to misplace. Maybe an answer to consumer concerns but they look a bit stuffy in these poses. Very unique to any toy line, these figures are in a scale with each other. Each figure has his own unique height. Let's get a look at each one of these figures on card and then off their card. So the first figure we'll look at is Lieutenant Worf. All of the Star Trek The Next Generation figures come on this same card back the only difference is, is that the character likeness appears at the bottom right hand corner. The same goes for the back of the card, with the exception of a character bio that's in the left hand corner of the card. Taking a look at this card back, we can see that we have the bridge crew, the original six, plus the evil Ferengi leader. There was also a phaser weapon and a diecast USS Enterprise starship. Moving down the card, we see the future figures that are going to be in the set the Anticade, Delegate, and the Sea Lay Leader. Also, they promised a USS Enterprise Starship, a shuttlecraft, and a Ferengi fighter. And we know they did the shuttlecraft and the Ferengi fighter, but they never produced an Enterprise Starship. Here's a look at Worf's bio. Each of these figures also came with a proof of purchase, worth one mission point, although I'm not really too sure if they ever had any way that you could turn in these points. So on the top of the left hand side of the card, we see Stardate 41000.1, 78 years after the original missions, an all new USS Enterprise and her crew head out to all new adventures. Their mission, to protect and defend Earth, Federation star bases and colonies, to seek out new lives and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. On the front of the card back at the top, we see it's for ages four and up, it says Star Trek The Next Generation, and it includes a phaser weapon and tricorder analyzer. They're also posable. And there's a really nice art animation of the Enterprise. Here's a good look at Worf inside of his bubble. 
Here's a look at Lieutenant Worf off his card. There's really good sculpting on this figure. In fact, it really does look like Worf quite a bit. What I find kind of interesting on this figure is they actually did apply some paint apps down here at the, uh, at the feet. So he has purple accents on his pants. Really neat. So overall, I really do like the Lieutenant Worf figure. He looks a lot like the character from the TV show. Maybe a little bit cartoonish, but because these were marketed for kids, definitely there's no real marks against it for that. Let's take a look at our next figure. So our next figure we're going to look at is Lieutenant Tasha Yar. Getting a look at Tasha Yar's back of her card, we see the character bio. And here's a good look at the figure still in her bubble. Here we have Tasha Yar off of her card, and probably this is the worst of all of the Bridge Crew set. Unfortunately, they really did not get the likeness very good on this figure. Let's get a good overall look at Tasha Yar off of her card. The next figure we're going to look at is Lieutenant Jordy LaForge. Here's a good look at Jordy's file card. And here's a good overall look at Jordy still in his bubble. Here we have a look at Jordy off of his card. Now Jordy was probably my favorite character on all of Star Trek The Next Generation. I really did enjoy the character, especially because I remembered him from reading Rainbow. I just wanted to point out the great sculpting on the Federation emblem on their shirts. Let's get a good overall look at Jordy off of his card. The fourth figure we'll be looking at is Lieutenant Commander Data. Let's get a good overall look at Data still on his card. And here is a quick look at Lieutenant Data's file card. Here we have Data off of his card, and this is the speckled faced version. Data was a really interesting character on the show. Being an android, he wasn't quite a human, he wasn't quite an alien, he was actually a robot. That was really neat and a very novel idea. Let's get a good overall look at Data off of his card. The next figure we're going to look at is Commander William Riker, also known as Number One. Here's a good look at Commander Riker still on his card. And here's a look at William Riker's file card. Here we have a good overall look at Commander Riker. So for the last figure we need to look at is Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Here's a look at Captain Picard still in his bubble. And here's the last of our file cards to look at, Captain Picard's. So long before Captain Picard became like a social media post pitcher, he was on a TV show called Star Trek The Next Generation. And this figure does capture his likeness very well. Captain Picard was somewhat of an interesting choice for the captain of the new Starship Enterprise. He definitely is the anti-Shatner. For a lot of us, that was kind of a good thing. Let's get a good overall look at Captain Picard off of his card. Like all Star Trek toys, the aliens are the hardest to find and the most expensive today, the Ferengi, Q, Antikin, and Sealy. The four variations of Data are also a collector's dream. Data came in a blue face, dark face, speckled face, and flesh face. There was also two small vehicles produced, the shuttlecraft Galileo and the Ferengi fighter. No Enterprise bridge set was produced. But after the second year's offering, consisting mostly of aliens and vehicles, the Gloob Star Trek line was canceled. The Wesley and Romulan figure were never produced. I'd imagine that these toys were the victim of some of the same problems that plagued earlier Star Trek toy lines. No aliens for the bridge crews to fight against. The aliens in the Galoob series only appeared in the first six episodes of season one and none from later on. I also remember original series fans being quite negative about the new series. Some of them, parents now, could have been less likely to get these for their kids. The TV show ran at strange times also. I remember Saturday at 4 p.m. 
Lots of kids I know miss the show entirely because of its strange airtime. I remember in the mid-1990s, lots of these toys filling the pegs at KB Toys and other discounters. But some 30 years after their release, I'm drawn back to these toys. To me, they are a look at what the first season of Star Trek The Next Generation was at the time of its production, trying to find its way. The later Playmate Star Trek The Next Generation toys found their audience, but unfortunately, these did not. The Galoob Toys people said it was a mistake to market these figures to kids only. I think that that decision at the time was correct. But with all the competition at that time, action figures were big business, and these just failed to find their audience. I remember watching the first Star Trek The Next Generation show and enjoying it. It wasn't the original series, it had its own feel. And the further it distanced itself, the better the show got. I was 15 when these came out way past collecting toys, but I do remember looking at them on the pegs and thinking, they're pretty cool. What was your experience with Gloob Star Trek? Did you like the TV show? Do you have these figures in your collection now, or did you have them when you were a kid? After watching this video, will you seek them out? Let me know in the comments. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to catch my latest uploads. And until next time, Engage! And like all these figures, the only difference on the card backs is somebody starting a car.